Okay, let me start by correcting myself because yes, the head was up and locked. Um, let's like say I have a head in my ass. On a, we'll, we'll get back to this. This is a tractor configuration. This, when I say tractor configuration, this is an air tractor representing a tractor configuration. Standard means it's going to pull it through the air. And this part right here is going to be the part that faces the pilot. So that's called the face. face. And this part that's up front is called the back. back. <laughs> so the part up front is the back and the part facing the pilot is the face. Then we get a pusher configuration, which is the propeller I brought in here. So discounting the rest of the airplane, we still have an, a propeller that has to propel it forward this way, just like it did a second ago. So the part that's going to go forward is going to be the back, and the part back here that's the flat side has to be the face, but it doesn't really face the pilot unless he got out and was back here. So the face is always looking back, and the back is always... Yeah, I guess we could say if you stand back here, I think that it will always be the face is what you see standing at the tail. Um, so then we can uh, CB. Oh, there's one of these at the uh, fly-in. It always makes me think of a Volkswagen bug. The bus? Yeah, that's it, the bus. So uh, another pusher. So this side here would be the, the uh, back, and this would be the face. Okay. And then we get into it's, this is an O2, it's the military version, the Skymaster, which is what this propeller is off of. So up here is the tractor configuration, which this side of the prop will be the face, and this will be the back, and then back here we'd have this part is going to be the back, and this part will be the face. So is the hub designed differently, or is it just put on backwards? Well, right there is what we have. And... As you can see, it's to me, it's just, it's almost like you see something, you're like, there's something wrong with this. I don't know what the hell is wrong with it. Because you're used to looking at it in a certain way, and like it's completely backwards. But it's not backwards, it's, it is backwards. It's just something. So I, the hub, I would believe now. Probably about like a fixed pitch. Oh, fixed pitch? Yeah. I don't know, can you just yeah. bolt it on backwards? Yeah. Just I think the, the chamfers and the holes may be a little different. I don't know. Uh, why would you fly a plane that does that anyway? You've seen the inside of a light combing. The thrust faces weren't made to do that. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I think we fixed that. All right. To create thrust, we're talking about creating thrust here. To create thrust, a blade must be set. A blade must be set at a certain angle. Must be set <laughs> at a certain angle to the plane of rotation. To the plane of rotation. So, I don't know, I have a lot here. I'm like, how much of this can I cut out and explain it? Um, I might screw with my notes big time here, and that's what I'm worried about. We'll just go with it. While rotating, while rotating, go in flight, in flight. So rotating, but in flight, forward momentum, each section, that's the section of each blade that we talked about, like every one inch section. Each section of the blade, each section of the blade has a motion 
that combines the forward momentum or the fo yeah, momentum or moment forward moment of the airplane with the rotary motion And what I'm going to do in, in a minute, it's what I'm leading up to, is explaining why it's like that. So if we take a look at this blade, and you can see that this is the angle that they've set it at. And you can see how this is nearly vertical over here. And it just starts going more towards the horizontal as we get down here. It's like, well, why is that? We want to use the entire propeller blade. We don't want to use just a section of it. So why is this at a different angle than this? I mean, it isn't attached to the same airplane. It's going forward at the same speed. Isn't every single piece of this going at the same RPM? So if it's going the same speed forward, all of it, it's going the same speed RPM, all of it. Why is it so different? And that has to do with strictly the speed at which it's going around, which is going to dictate what the angle is on there and then overall the angle of the blade. So we got that. So that's where I'm going with this. But I threw that out there, and then I'm going to digress just a little bit and say the blade, the blade has a path through the air like a corkscrew. Or a bolt or a screw, which is a very, very dangerous thing for me to bring up since I haven't clearly explained to you that there are coarse thread bolts and fine thread bolts. That's kind of a <laughs> oh, cheap, shot. <laughs> cheap shot of those of you who have forced the wrong bolt onto the wrong. Not, like no. a What's that? Climb? Yes. All right. Uh, let's see. We will call it. Uh, can I move over? Yes. All right. All right, subheading that. So, let's see, the blade has a path to the air like a corkscrew or screw. Oh. There it is. This type of screw would be a what? Coarse. Coarse, and this would be? Fine. Fine thread. So, we're saying that the blade has a path through the air like a corkscrew or screw. So, if we have a fine threaded screw, it's got to turn around a whole bunch of times to make it go forward so many feet and then if we have a coarse thread it only has to go around a couple of times well it seems like a course would be the best way to go right turn the airplane the engine lower the speed and we go further but it doesn't work that way because when we turn the engine slower what happens to our uh, horsepower it goes down so we'd have more horsepower over here less horsepower here all right so the amount of bite uh, that the blade takes is determined by the blade angle The amount of, we'll say bite, bite, the blade takes is determined by the blade angle. So if a high angle, that would equal a bigger bite, a big bite. We're going to have a low angle, would equal a little bite, <coughs> so to speak. And I believe this point was already made, but I'll write it. Due to pitch distribution, what is pitch distribution? Changes up and down the blade. Up and down the blade. You see the twist of this blade? Some of you. It's blade is really freaking heavy. I carry it. I can pick it up and move it around. But the pitch.
pitch distribution, you can see that it's the difference between here and here. It's that changing twist that we get. So due to pitch distribution, which is kind of like saying the twist of the blade, but I'll just say it in twist of blade. The blade angle at one station is different, I'll say usually different, from the blade angle at another station. Right, so the blade angle right here is different than the blade angle right here. It's actually different from here to here. I mean, one inch apart. I can see it standing right on the top of it. It's different. You may not see it back there, but if you're looking at it straight down, you can see every single inch is going to be a different angle all the way down that blade. And blade angle is a really big deal, and so is pitch. Um, so blade angle. <coughs> blade angle as a pronounced, pronounced, pronounced effect on the mass of air moved as well as engine RPM. So for one degree, one degree of blade angle, oops, one degree of blade angle change really. So one degree of blade angle can change engine RPM. by 60 to 90 RPMs. So you remember we talked about air conditioners on. It goes against the dad code to have an air conditioner running with the door open. Why do you leave those lights on? lose my damn car. Yeah. You have half the lights off anyway. Good for you. Saving electricity. I don't care. I have plenty of light where I am. You decide. Oh, All right. Uh, we talked many times about static RPM. Like, uh, he did. Uh, I'll just save you the embarrassment. So static RPM, if you have an aircraft with a fixed pitch propeller, by the way, this would not be a fixed pitch prop because it has this hub up here and these blades twist and you control that and we'll get into that. Uh, but a fixed pitch propeller, such as the one you mounted on the front of the engine that you're all testing across the street, a fixed pitch propeller. So we have an aircraft with a fixed pitch propeller, not a constant speed. And when we look in the type certificate data sheet for the aircraft, it will say you may have this engine and these propeller combinations. And you can pick one of those props and you pick the right prop, I hope. And when you have that engine and that prop, it says the static RPM shall be between, and it gives you a number, it gives you a high end and a low end. And that static RPM is wide open throttle, feet on the brakes, not moving. And that'll make a lot more sense here very shortly why, why that is. And so then you get that RPM. So you can imagine that if we had an aircraft that said, well, the RPM has to be between uh, 2000 to 21, I should make it 2200, just do easy math here, 2200. I was going to hit myself. So the, the RPM range has to be that. And uh, for some strange reason, you were over 2200, um, 2250. One degree would bring you back in that range. That doesn't really ever happen. If you have an aircraft that's usually over speeding, it, either, well, it could happen. It usually means you have the wrong prop on it. Or if you're under speeding, it usually means you have the wrong prop. But it's designed to say that if it goes outside of this range, it usually means that um, your engine isn't producing the horsepower. But the first thing I would always suspect is wrong prop propeller. 
um, or a propeller that is stamped correctly that has been repitched because you can repitch a uh, fixed pitch prop. Not a wood one. They, uh, they splinter quite well if you try and do that. So remember, static RPM gives you a range. That range is um, what, it's set. What's that? I was going to say wide open RPM feet on the ground. Wide open RPM feet on the ground. Feet off the ground changes everything. Uh, a lot of wind coming at you would also change it. So it kind of has to be, I don't stress that, but sort of a low wind environment. Uh, let me see. Yeah. All right, now we're going to get on to the what? All right, the reason, the reason why blades have pitch distribution twist and many different airfoils and I, remember I'm talking about in one blade this has all of those things it has pitch, pitch distribution um, which is twist and different airfoils and different angles we have different angles um, the twist and the airfoil is different from here to here. You just run your hand across it. It's super thin right here. The cord is smaller. The cord is fat over here. It's the blade, let me just show you, uh, fatter over here. Uh, it's even fatter here, but the cord comes down over here. So it's every single inch is a little bit different. The reason why it has every one of those things um, is because, the reason why I believe it is oils is because uh, the blade moves in multiple dimensions. One, we have different rotational speeds. of each section. Um, and, and I'll write this in a little picture. Uh, forward movement of aircraft creates different angles for angles of attack. For each section. And again, what is angle of attack? Cord line and relative wind. All right. All right, so we looked at this one. We talked about just raw blade angle. Remember, I told you this is a four blade propeller, so we're looking at the angle right here versus right here. And that gave me my blade angle. <coughs> All right. This can get a little confusing. And sometimes these drawings are like, what is going on here? Let's take a look at this one right over here, this drawing here. And so right now we have a blade that's sitting on the aircraft at, at this angle. And you can notice that angle matches this angle, matches that angle, matches that angle. So the blade angle isn't changing. But we take a look at this blade right here. What it's representing is you are doing static RPM. You are there, the aircraft is not moving, your feet are on the brakes, and you've got the engine in some RPM. It doesn't matter for our, our purposes right here. Some RPM. And because the aircraft is not moving forward, look at where the relative air is coming at it. You have a very large angle coming at this. As opposed to we take our feet off the brakes and start to roll. Let's say this is 100, 100 knots. This is 80 because I'm just looking at the difference here. And you can see that as the plane starts to roll forward, the forward motion of the plane creates a different angle of attack which is actually starting to line up much better with the leading edge, which makes that a much 
more efficient airfoil. And then at max forward speed, or we should say at cruise speed, the um, forward motion of the air is now lined up correctly with the cord between a two to four degree angle, giving us a more efficient airfoil right there. So you can see we start slowing down, hit the brakes, and we start losing all of that. So it's important to note that the forward movement of the aircraft changes what's happening with the relative wind. You follow that so far? Okay. <coughs> All right. Um, same representation really here. I think I have some, let me see some notes. I what the hell I was talking about on this one. One of these I have a bunch of notes for. Is it this one or this one? Nah, let's go with this one. We'll see where we go. All right. Let me write this for you. So we have all of that happening. Different oil foils, angle attack. Okay. Now we're going to look at one, two, Three example um, of y of y each station is at a different angle. Okay, thing to note: the ideal AOA, which stands for angle of attack on a blade is two to four degrees. Two degrees, four degrees. Fifteen degrees will usually result in a stall. What's a stall? You know go forward. You have no, you don't have any lift. The air trying to come across the blade has now separated, and so that part of the blade becomes unusable. I don't, books never talk about this, but from my, pers my perspective, it seems to be a bigger deal than I would think you would, you would actually realize. If one section of the blade is stalled out and another section is not, then you're pulling on the prop not all together, but in a weird section. Uh, you want to get me excited? Touch the blade on my propeller when we're trying to move the airplane. I mean, I've actually yelled at people, don't touch my freaking prop! Because I've seen props get ruined. Uh, <coughs> I see people do all the time. They're pushing forward with blades. And you talk to any prop shop, they'll say, when those blades are hot, they've been sitting out in the sun, and uh, you grab onto it and start pulling on them, you'll actually twist them and, and, and put a uh, little twist in it. And now it's out of balance, and you can feel it. And it's, you got to have them all restraightened. Overhaul, and it's like, don't do that. Uh, blades, let me see. Blade angles are, blade angles are smallest at tip and largest at hub. Well, that makes sense. Looking at that one, it's nearly straight up and down already, the tip. By the time you get down to the hub, it's angled off quite a bit. All right, my example, let me see. Example. I just have to know which one I want to talk about. This one. Okay, this is, and I don't think you need to necessarily take notes on this one, but this is a representation of what's happening with those blades and why each one is doing something different. So, let me see, A, B, C. This is the exact same propeller in three different locations. So, A, we'll say is at um, 2.9 feet. Is that 36? Is that? No, 
One foot. Oh, one foot. One foot. I want to make sure I have the right one. Um, this is 2.9. Oh, I got it. Okay, around. hang on. Let me do this. Pen. There we go. So uh, this shows uh, A. A is at uh, station 36. 36. Um, B is at station 24. And C is at station 12. Does it say that anywhere? Okay. So again, 36, 24, 12. So 12 inches out, 24 inches out, 36 out. So it's kind of backwards from where that's sitting. So this is out at the tip, so to speak. This is the tip. This is the hub, hub end, hub end. All right. For every one foot, one foot, the plane moves forward. So this is representing what? So this is attached to the plane. It's all together. So when this moves forward a foot, everybody's got to come along. So everything's moving forward one foot. So during that one foot, what it's showing here on this one right here is how far the blade moves. So that is um, rotation. So this one is going to move 29 feet. So we're going to look at out the tip. 2.9. So through an arc, moved 2.9 feet, about three feet. So moved right about three feet. 24 inches moved about 1.94. And near the hub, 12 inches, it only moved about a foot. Can you see that? Okay, rotational. So we're talking about now how, how it's rotated, not RPM, because it's all the same RPM. By the way, I think this angle, I don't know what it did give you, oh, 150, not that it matters, 150 miles per hour at 2,000 RPM was the example that they set this up with. All right, so we got that. We know what the rotation is, each one. We know how far it moved forward. So everything moved forward a foot, because it's all detached. If I move the hub forward a foot, the rest of the prop goes with it forward a foot. Forwards that way for the prop. Yeah, the same distance the tip travels further in the arc. That's the up and down part. Uh, the arc. Correct. So the tip moved how far? Further than the hub. How much exactly? 2.9 feet. 2 .9 feet at at 24 inches it moved. 1.94 and down at the end it moved. About just about a foot. All right. All right. Now the relative wind hits the blade at an angle. Using Pythagorean's theorem, if you remember that, a squared, b squared, c squared, um, and then using um, tan, arc, sine, remember all that, or actually in this case, arc, tangent, arc. We can figure out Pythagorean theorem. We can figure out, because we I just gave you the length of the rotation, and we knew how far forward the aircraft moved. So given those two things, we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of AB and the arc sine, um, tan and cosine, which you guys all know from electricity, except for, but you have math. We can figure out that's 19 degrees. And so we know that the air is now coming, relative wind is at 19 degrees. And we need our prop blade there all the way out of the tip to be hitting the air at an angle of two to four degrees. Therefore, my angle should be roughly two to four degrees different from that. So, follow? All right, so we should have uh, 22, about 22 degrees. So, two to four degrees, what's the between? Be three, so we'll say three. So, blade angle should be about 22 degrees. Well, let's look at what it's in the middle of the prop. Well, again, using Pythagorean's theorem and all that, we figured out that this angle right here is 27 degrees. So 27 degrees, we should have a blade angle of roughly 30 degrees. And the same over here. We figure it out, Pythagorean's theorem, blah, 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 46. We should have a blade angle of about 49 degrees. So do you see why there's twist in it now? Maybe I went a long way around and secured us, but now you can see why that is. Well, what happens, now looking at this right here, if I keep the, uh, wow, I keep, I keep the uh, 
RPM the same, and I don't know how I'm gonna keep the miles per hour the same, just I'd go into a dive. I'm gonna go faster, so this right here goes up, because <laughs> we're going faster, um, but this stays the same, and so this goes faster, so this line is gonna come out here further, which is gonna change the angle right over here, um, and that of the wind, but if it's a fixed pitch prop, that's not gonna change, so it becomes less efficient. Or um, I decrease the RPM a little bit. Well, that's gonna shorten this, uh, sorry, shorten this a little bit, which changes the angle here. If I'm still going, can you see though? You change any one thing, and that's what Orville and Wilbur were talking about. If you change the speed, change the RPM, or change, uh, what else we have? What's that? Um, you can't. So you change either either one of the speed or the RPM, and you're going to, or the, uh, well, how far it goes at one foot is the miles per hour. Um, change any one of those things, you're going to change the triangle. You're going to mess up the triangle. And unfortunately, with a fixed pitch propeller, you can't twist it in flight. So somebody had to sit down and go, well, where's it going to work? So during takeoff speeds, while you've got it firewalled, high RPM, and low forward velocity, it's all messed up. And then you're going to get to a point where it's like, that's the sweet spot, don't change anything. But then you're going to you know, start climbing. And anyway, yeah? Wouldn't wind direction also be a factor? Because if you've got a tailwind, uh, that yeah, change. Yeah. For me, the helpful thing about tailwinds, think about boats in a river. And it's a fast moving river. Yep. So if your propeller is capable of moving your boat at 40 miles per hour, you're going to max open, wide open speed. How fast are you going on the water? 40 plus the speed of the water. On the water, you're going 40. But if you look at the shore and you have a 40 mile an hour current, you're doing 80 miles an hour. But the boat only sees only sees 40, still moving 40. So it doesn't really change anything because the air moves along with it at that. So that's airspeed. Upriver. Yep. Yep. You're still, you get in a headwind, your speedometer or your, your um, airspeed indicator is still going to show the same. Rather you're going upwind or downwind, it shows the same. But your ground speed is going to change. Doesn't. All right, so let me see. So the angle of attack, angle of attack will change for any change in RPM or aircraft speed. You change RPM or aircraft speed, the RPM, I'm sorry, I just said that. Let me see. We'll just, so we had the example, we just did all that, and we'll just say, let me see, five, um, the angle of attack. will change with any change in RPM or speed. That's airspeed, not ground speed. Uh, let's see, so fixed pitch props. are typically designed for optimum efficiency um, at a narrow set of parameters. Because that's what you got to work with. We got to figure it out. What are we going to make this thing do? Where are we going to make it do it? See, I also had that other slide. Which, which one was it? This one? Did 
different air speeds and RPMs. It's the same concept. Um, all right, so let's see. Oh, that's not it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, back to this one. Uh, it's the difference between angle of attack when stationary versus in flight. Same concept. Uh, the propeller is going to move from A to B. That's where it moved. It, so this is the prop. It just moved down from A to B. That's on the ground. It moves from A to B on the ground. Angle of attack is extremely inefficient. It's hitting it from right here. You can see direction of relative airstream. So C is a pretty big angle right there. Uh, in flight, this is going to go down, but the aircraft moved forward. Same thing. We end up with a diagram here. So the prop moved from... Um, Yeah, here. Can you talk about? Uh, I can talk about anything. The relative direction of, of, of the airstream, because in my mind I think the air is coming from the front, but because it's on the ground, it's going from the bottom. Okay, that's a good thing. So let's think about um, an aircraft sitting there running. You can't see the propeller because it's turning so fast, and you have to figure that. I don't know the exact speed. This is moving at roughly 400 and some miles per hour. But the airplane is moving forward. Let's take a 150s, 172, 182. It's moving forward at 100 to 120 miles per hour. So which is moving faster? Prop. The, yeah. The, this is moving a lot faster. So that's why... <coughs> When you look at it, you think the angle of attack is coming at it like this mm -hmm. because you're thinking forward velocity of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. You're forgetting that this is moving four, we'll say four times faster in a circle. So most of the relative wind is this. Okay. And then as the aircraft starts moving forward, it's going to rotate a little bit that way. Okay. So it, yeah. on the brakes. Forward velocity, and then when this will rotate, so but it's just going to change like that much because most of the speed is in the circle. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so that's that's what that is, just a representation of that. Um, yeah, this one. Another example, let's see, this blade is at 20 degrees RPM at, tw it's at 1,200, well, it says right there, 1,200 RPM. At 1,200 RPM, the blades are not moving very fast. Um, I don't know what the speed is. No forward motion. So right here, no forward motion. That blade at 1,200 RPM, we have an angle of attack of not so good, right? Same 1,200 RPM. We move forward, now we're rolling down the runway. I don't know what the hell is going to roll in the runway at 1,200 RPM, but at 1,200 RPM, uh, forward velocity of 50 miles per hour. We're going to get an angle of attack of, yeah, 8. Unless that's 0. 0.8. 8. Um, yeah, 0. 0.8. Um, better than 20. Increase RPM, pull it to 4.4. Now it's good. Just an example of just how it changes everything. How can you have a 20 degree LA when it's already stalled at 15? It is stalled. Right. That's the problem with sitting there with feet on the brakes and not running. It's stalled. Okay. Um, it is pulling air through it, so you'll have some. Some. I mean, enough to get you rolling. That's why you start to feel the pull as you start to go. Unlike a car, you have a lot of slippage at first. That's why it's more fun to kind of give it just enough power to get the airplane rolling. Then once it's rolling, then mash the throttle in. You feel it pull you back a little bit, and that's more fun. <laughs> so, all right. So props, fixed pitch props are only effective in a very narrow range. Can you give us an example of a range? Or, like, What's that range? Yeah, like what do you mean a range? Like uh, altitude or no. RPM range? Um, RPM and speed. So if I change the speed, I change that triangle again. So that you have to figure that triangle. Like the narrow, narrow set of parameters is the 
is only going to fit that that blade. Here's my blade. Terrible blade. That angle of attack where I want it to be two to four degrees is only going to work in a very narrow set of parameters. Yeah. This right here, the speed, has to be within whatever the, let's say, RPM is. So the RPM and the speed have to be just right in order to get that two to four degree. Because they're not adjustable. Not adjustable. If I decrease the speed, I'm going to screw it up. If I increase the speed, I'm going to screw it up. If I increase the RPM too much, I'll screw it up. Drop the RPM, I'll screw it up. Yeah. You change any one of these parameters, it starts going outside that two to four. So a very narrow range of efficiency. That's not to say that it won't work. I mean, you don't you know, hit the magic number and suddenly it's like, ah, I've got no forward thrust. It, it doesn't work that way. It just starts to get not efficient. And I guess this would explain why, especially with fixed pitch propellers, you get to a point where you start mashing the throttle up, giving it more and more and more throttle. All you're doing is making more noise and burning more gas. It's not going any faster because the propeller is becoming less and less efficient. Not so with the constant speed. It will continue to twist to meet meet those parameters that it's supposed to do. So is there a standard difference between flying and cruise I think it's two degrees per each. So what he's talking about is in an aircraft, like I'll go back to the Cessna 140 since I like the 140 so much. Cessna 140 is a, uh, an older uh, fixed pitch propped airplane. And if I remember correctly in the type certificate data sheet, they gave you several different props, but um, within one specific propeller, they gave you uh, a range of pitches that you can have with that one propeller. And with those range of pitches, it gave you a range of RPM that it would, you had to be within the static RPM range. So as long as you were at the low end or the high end. Um, and so if you wanted to have a prop that was a climb prop, you would have it pitched so that you got static RPM, the highest static RPM. Because the highest static RPM meant the engine is turning as fast as it can within its limits. And that equals horsepower. So you'd have more horsepower on takeoff. But then when you get up to altitude and want to level off and cruise, well, it's more like a fine, fine pitch bolt or screw. And you just got to turn too many times to make good forward speed. So it's really good climb prop to get you up well. But once you're up, you're not going to have the forward velocity. Or you can turn it around and say, well, I want a good cruise prop. Uh, a cruise prop would be one that um, has its pitch to so a lower RPM. So you're not going to get quite as much horsepower on takeoff. It's too coarse of a pitch. But once you've backed off on the throttle and you're, you're cruising along, then it's more efficient. Kind of like difference, I guess, between first gear and third gear. Um, my 150 that I had was just they're horribly slow. And um, I went from the 140 to the 150. 140s are actually kind of fast or slippery. Now the 150s are just horribly slow. And so, you know, I, I did the whole thing. I figured out where a static RPM was. Then I sat down. I did all this. I did all the math. And I'm like, okay, so, you know, uh, how much do I have to, where's my pitch at? What do I have to do to get a little more speed out of this thing? And it was, it was kind of funny to do the whole works. And, and if I did this, how much more speed would I get? Because I can only pitch it by this much. And it came up to, like, it wasn't worth even the amount of time that I already spent on it. So it was kind of funny. You said on your fixed, on your fixed pitch? The 150. the 150. Yeah. How, how do you get more pitch on a fixed pitch? Well, that's, that's my funny story. <laughs> you be twisted. Okay. <laughs> so I, I got to see this happen one time, and it was really cool. So we had a customer who wanted a repitch, and so I took it to this place in Stockton, you know, and I, you know, take the prop home with you, and in the morning, go instead of coming to work, go to Stockton, have it pitched, then bring it back to work. So, you know, I, I go in there. And, and this is not a science. This is art, right? And you get, and, you know, it's early in the morning, so he's got a coffee and a cigarette. And so he, it's this World War II machine. It looks like it came right off a battleship. I swear, it's painted battleship gray. And, uh, and there's a garbage can with a bunch of wood in it, and he, and he sticks it in there, and these, these hydraulic things just, and they clamp the hub, 
And then he takes some scraps of wood and he puts in these jaws. They come in and just crunch the wood and they crunch the right by here. Just grabs onto it. And it's just a hydraulic ram with this, this big old long gear shifter up here and a pressure gauge. And you know, a cigarette in my mouth, I go, yeah, just kind of pull back. Oh, that, that ought to be good. That, that's good. You know, cigarette back in the mouth, takes on the prop bench, does an angle chuck. Ah, just a little bit more. Puts it back in, crunches the wood. Just pull it back on the prop bench. Yeah, that'll do it. We'll do the other side now. You know, and just. <laughs> yeah. The art. I'm like, how many times can you do that? Ah, about five times to a prop. You know, it's, you know. It's like, I can't believe you just did that. And he's like, yeah, I nailed it, you know. So, the guy was an artist. <laughs> That's how it's done. Of course, I don't know. He might have been just lying to me the whole time. Probably didn't change a damn thing, you know. There you go. I just made some noise. And, all right. Uh, let's see. That's not important. Let's see. Uh, when you were talking about the, the blade angle, the yeah. one degree changes between 16 RPM, it doesn't matter which way the angle you change it to a greater degree or a less degree. Oh, yeah. You want a positive angle to that. Positive angle. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, well, it depends how you look at it. So here's the airfoil, here's the flat side, here's the round side. I don't want to come in this way, I want to come in this way. It's like a wing. So then that would increase the angle from... Oh. Hmm? What he's saying is that when you increase the pitch, it's going to slow down the engine. If you decrease the pitch, it's going to speed up the engine. Is that right? But what he said is correct, yes. Okay. Who said it one more time? <laughs> When you in <laughs> when you increase the pitch, okay. increase pitch, you decrease engine RPM. Okay. That's static. Okay. Because it's taking more of a bite out of the air. So decrease pitch will increase RPM. That's what you're asking? <laughs> that is true. All right, I think I think we did pretty good there. <laughs> All right, so if you were a little bit like, what the hell just happened? The major takeaway from this is why is it like that? Why is it twisted? Well, the reason why is because the angle of attack changes on everyone. Can you go back to one slide? Hang on.